in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back to another episode of Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKN. The next guest I got live and direct is an artist from Netherlands. He's written the song Child of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Joel Crosby. Hey man, I appreciate you coming on this podcast. Um, so uh give us a little backstory on your band that you uh formed. Well, um, uh, originally we uh, we said we were going to call ourselves Agape, but we changed our name to Joel and Ellen just one month after releasing our first uh, song on uh, Spotify. And uh, I have been in uh, several bands and my wife comes from a musical family from Papua New Guinea. So uh, together we just decided to, to write music. That's really dope, man. So uh, let me ask you this. Joel and Ellen, um, forming that band, uh, dropping the first song, what was what were you going through? Was it overwhelming for you? For you both? Well, actually, we, we never thought we were going to release music. It was, uh, yeah, I, I had written this song in 2018, and Ellen's former roommate uh, became a producer. So he started talking to me on uh, Instagram, and I and I asked him like, uh, "Well, you want to uh, record one of my songs?" And then he said, "Yeah, let's do it." So we we got it recorded, and then we published it to Spotify. But it never never crossed our minds to actually have it uh, recorded and publish it. That's really amazing, man. So uh, so give us a little bit of backstory on uh what your future goals are. Maybe you got, uh, you're working on new projects or what's going on right now, man. Well, um, yeah, we, we published this first song, released this first song. And then we kind of, we really liked how it went and, uh, how many views we got first week already. And, uh, then we decided to, to keep on writing new music, new songs, and uh, I get a lot of inspiration uh, occasionally. So then I, I start writing stuff, and Nellen is very musical. So she thinks up all the all the melodies, and I start writing lyrics to the melodies. So uh, our next uh, song will actually be uh, recorded next week, and we hope to publish it uh, within uh, one month after uh, recording. And uh, we have already written three songs i think that are ready to be uh recorded that's really amazing man so uh so man talk about the first song man how how did you come up with the lyrics and uh what was the producer going through what was he telling you uh was he giving to uh how, how the song should be or what well it's pretty funny actually because i i told the producer what genre i wanted uh, I wanted something uh, uh, that was more rock, but he made it electro pop pop instead. Um, but I didn't really mind because it got a really vibey uh, uh, sound to it, so that would that was pretty cool. Um, but the actual actual writing, uh, we started writing in, or I started writing the song in 2018, and then uh, shortly before actually. Recording it, I threw away threw away all the lyrics except for uh, one and a half verses, and I rewrote the song. And then on the day it was to be recorded, I still did not have a chorus, uh, so I thought up a chorus uh, while being in the studio. And then uh, the, when I started recording the song, that was the first time for me to actually sing the song uh, in full. Wow, man! So, what, what was what was the what was your emotions going through when you were recording that song, man? I was just really praying, actually praying to God that He would guide the song, that He would uh, help me think up lyrics that 
were uplifting. Um, just, I mean, I, I wanted something that was adequate, you know, to or or something good that would uh, have a good uh, message to the world. And so that's also the reason why I deleted all the lyrics except for the, those one and a half verses. I I was just thinking and praying to God that the, the lyrics and the sound would be good enough. That's dope, man. So uh, so you can say that God inspired that song, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He definitely did. That's what's up, man. I like that. So uh, let me ask you this, man. Can we uh, see a live performance or maybe a music video to that song? Uh, yeah, I can send you a music video. I got one. Oh, you you got a, you got a music video on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, really? Okay. All right, yeah. man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, plug in all your social media outlets so everyone that's uh hearing this audio right now can go back and go follow you on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that. All right. I'll send it all. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. Uh, have you ever done any, uh, like, is, is the first song you did the only music video put out, or are you coming out with another music video later on down the week, months, years, or what? Well, this is our first uh, music video. Uh, our next song will be uh, the story of me and Nellen and uh, how we kind of started uh, our, uh, yeah, our marriage and everything. And uh, that one... We're going to probably have to do a music video to that, but we're going to do that one ourselves, and it might take uh, longer than the music video uh, of the first song. So we're not not really sure when the music video will be live, but uh, we are planning on making one. All right. So, uh, so you said that you were in a band, right? Yeah, I used to be in a band. Okay. Uh, I started singing in uh, 2012 joined a choir because I was uh, very shy and I wanted to overcome the shyness so then they uh, told me well you can be in the choir and stuff but you got to sing solo and I said well okay that's one way to overcome the shyness and then uh, they they told me I had to do a solo in front of 1200 people so yeah I did I overcame the shyness because of it and then I uh, started a band uh, which, uh, you know, first concert that we had was about 800 people. Then we split up and then we, uh, I started a new band. I was in that band for four years. Uh, and then uh, we split up as well. But now I, I'm, I started this uh, you know, small, I don't know if you would call it a group, but I started singing with uh, my wife. So... You had a, a band duo, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so let me ask you, uh, being in the band, man, having that role, what was it like, man? Was there a lot of pressure at times? Yeah, there was definitely a lot of pressure because there were a lot of ex expectations from everyone. Uh, we were in a church band, so uh, everything we did, we did voluntarily. Um, uh, but people were always expecting more and more time uh, and I, I really did my best and uh, and I was band leader as well so I was the only singer band leader I uh, I strained my voice while in that band so my uh, my voice isn't really what it used to be um, damn yeah so that so that really affects you uh, uh, singing and all that well, affects me how? Like your vocals. Yeah, my vocals. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm trying to train them, uh, adapting new styles of singing, and uh, yeah, th making my own music really helps in that because now I can pick a genre that really doesn't really put too much stress on my vocals. Cool, cool. So, uh, so you like you're liking like a more like pop, huh? Like you have a more pop sound. Yeah, pop, probably, hopefully, I think, folk in the future, because folk also has a nice sound to it. Okay, all right, some folk, all right. 
So, man, um, what inspired you to come up with that sound, man? Was it just the producer, the way he put the track down, or was this something that you really were looking forward to doing? Yeah, definitely the producer, because I, I wanted more uh, a rock sound to it. Um, but my producer has mostly done uh, hip-hop, and I don't really do hip-hop. Uh, but, yeah, he was able to uh, make some uh, pop instead. That's that's what's up, man. I, I, I man, everybody, make sure you gotta go with, look up on Spotify. Uh, we're gonna have a link in the description. So, uh, man, it's gonna be really dope, man. I, I can't wait to hear this. So, uh, so let me ask you this, man. You're from the Netherlands, right? What was it like growing up there, man? Well, uh, actually, I'm half American, so I I came here when I was three. My dad is a veteran. Uh, but growing up in the Netherlands is, well, I don't know. Uh, I'm more of a mountains and sea guy, and this uh, there are no mountains here, and the ocean is gray. Not really. Yeah. Wow, man. So, uh, what kind of what kind of uh, music do they have in Netherlands? Like, is it like is it like the same as the uh, states, or is it different? No, it's it's really different. You know, uh, uh, Irish pub songs, right? Yeah. Kind of like that, uh, but Dutch. All right. Hell yeah. That's what's up, man. See, I've never been, I've, I've never been out. I've never been out of the U.S., so I, I don't know what it's like, but that's why we asked you that, because, you know what I mean, the audience might want to know that, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, man, that's pretty dope. Um, Do you ever come to the States at all? Yeah, I've been to the States three times. Uh, one time in 2003, one time in 2015, and one time in uh, 2017. And I've really seen the states change over time. In 2003, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, but in 2015, we, I saw that uh, people have gotten poorer or something. And then 2017, I mean, I've been to 20 countries. Yeah. I've been to Romania three times. Um, I've never seen as many homeless people as in the States. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem down here, man. You know what I mean? We need to, together, we need to fix it. But, you know what I mean? Until we get together and fix it, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? I can't really speak on that. But, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, um, so you've been in 20 countries? Yeah. So what it was? So what would you say like your top five countries you have to go? You have to go back to. I have to go back to. Yeah. Um, oh, let me think. I've been to many countries. Okay, so uh, I want to go to Sweden with my wife. Okay. Uh, definitely Egypt. I've been to Egypt three times. Egypt is awesome. It's so beautiful there. Um. Uh, let me think. So. Egypt, Egypt would be my number one, um, or no, 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 number two. I mean, America is always number one. I really like America. Uh, Egypt, Croatia is beautiful. Greece is awesome. So that's five. That's dope, man. That's dope. Hell yeah. So let's go to this, man. Um, so you already discussed about doing live performances on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook Live, and all that, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, do you, do you have any collabs besides your wife that you're working on? Uh, what do you mean? Like, do you have any other collabs that you're working with any other producers, any other uh artists on any other tracks? You know? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, uh, what, what, what? How are you different from other artists? Um. Yeah. Probably because I uh, came into the industry uh, uh, unintentionally. Uh, I'm I'm into marketing, so that's that's basically how I get my music heard. Um, I I reach out to people who promote my music. Um, but yeah, I just make whatever comes up in you know whatever comes up in my mind. You know, I just whatever inspires me, I write about it. And I have been, I've had a crazy life, so I write about that a lot. 
All right, man. So uh, what would you say to inspire the youth? Um, well, don't go with flow. Whatever other people are doing, uh, be different. Uh, be proud to be different. Don't try to be like everybody else. Uh, there's enough people out there who want to be like everybody else. So just be yourself uh, and uh, follow Jesus. Do what Jesus did in the Bible. Read the Bible. Pray to God. Um, yeah, just have your focus and your heart in God because that's the only answer. Who is your music targeted towards? Um, well, actually, I'm I'm just writing whatever inspires me, so I don't really have a, a, a group in mind. Um, but I just I just write my music, I publish it, and then whoever likes it, that's fine. Favorite quotes? Um, uh, yeah, there's this one I can't think of right now. Um, it has something to do with, uh, you can't, you can't convince people that they're wrong because they can only find out themselves. How old were you when you, uh, decided you wanted to do music? I, uh, started in 2012, so I was 18 at the time. Um... Yeah, I wasn't really, I wasn't really thinking about doing music. I just did it to uh, overcome the shyness that I mentioned here earlier. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just I went, just I, I went with it, and uh, I have no idea how I ended up here eventually. <laughs> if you could collaborate with any any artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I would like to collaborate with Chris Howland, uh, Torin Wells, Phil J. Those are all all pretty small artists, probably, but uh, they are Christian artists in the same genre as the song that that I released, and I I have been in contact with them. Uh, I really like their music. I've got a whole playlist of their music, and it's great music. So probably uh, one of them, yeah. What are your music guilty pleasures? Um, yeah, growing up in uh, the Netherlands, I haven't really uh, picked up all the vocal vocabulary. Uh, uh, so I don't really know what the guilty pleasures are. Like, what do you listen to that no one would expect you to be listening to? That would have to be uh, alternative rock, probably. All right. Hell yeah. Alternative rock. So let me ask you this, man. Yeah. What did you do outside of music, man? If you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? Well, uh, I've always wanted to become a writer. And I'm actually writing my, my first book right now. Uh, but it's taking a long time because it's pretty hard. I'm writing a historical nonfiction. Uh, and uh, also, uh, besides that, I'm building a uh, camper van with my wife so we can tour Europe. And then we're going to uh, have that camper van shipped over to the U.S. and continue our tour there. Dope, man. So, uh, man, what countries are you all hitting in Europe? Uh, probably all of them. Uh, we're gonna stay away from uh, from the Asia, and uh, we're probably gonna go over to uh, Morocco as well. But n yeah, not anywhere uh, crazy besides that. Europe is pretty small, so we can just go everywhere. Yeah, I've never been to Europe, man. Is it uh, is is your Europe and United Kingdom different? Uh, well, United Kingdom is part of Europe. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I didn't see. You know what I mean? I've never been that way, so I never discovered anything other past than you know what I mean where I'm at right now. So, but that's yeah. man, that's really dope. You, you get all them opportunities to do that, man. Congratulations to you. So, uh, yeah. 
What can we expect? How is, how is your music going to evolve from here, man? Our music is going to evolve? Yes. Um, I hope we're going to um, establish a, a genre, just one genre that we can uh, write our music in, which is probably going to be pop folk, like I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, I'm hoping a little bit of, of a rock vibe to it as well. Um, but yeah, that that kind of lays in the hands of our producer to see what uh, he is capable of uh, producing, and we hope we can uh, have as much say in it as possible. But we're gonna have to see how the future goes. That's dope, man. So you have any special shout outs you want to give to your fans, to your supporters? Like, what do you want to tell them? Well. Um, uh, to my fans and supporters, I want to say thank you for following us. Look up us, uh, look us up on YouTube, on uh, Spotify, and uh, follow us to stay updated on upcoming releases. All right, you got any final words you want to uh, give, Big Dog? Uh, I just want to thank you for this uh, podcast, the opportunity, and uh, uh, yeah, God bless. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Crosby from Joe and Ellen. Go get it. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everything. Go follow them. Let them know you're supporting them. Have a good night. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm a girl.